we are done with a lot of things we have learned the basics about interfaces and say object oriented programming and we learned about exception handling and web driver interface right so we started off with selenium part yesterday now from today we will be completely working with selenium only and whenever we we would be requiring something from java then we would be learning that thing specifically right so here the first thing is say okay. how selenium works on page source first of all what is a page source some of you might know some of you might not know about it so for example let us just consider we go to a page not on this window let us just consider another window right so here or on this window as well say qtpselenium.com and if we go to this contact us page we get to see a lot of things <coughs> now here on this particular page we are able to see some text written right apart from that text we have some text boxes right this is a name box this is a email box this is a contact number box and here there are few other things right now the thing is how do we get access to all these things right and what are these things now whenever we have a page this is not the way selenium sees this page it sees it in a different way and it sees something like this right so each and everything on this page has something relevant to it specified here right and this page is a html page now here on this html page there are different different tags and their attributes right now every tag has its own say say uh, significance right now for example just a second chrome is freezing a lot yeah for example here we have this name field right now here in this name field we have some information right now whenever we have a text box right it is of type input the tag name is input right so there are different different kinds of tags for different different types of elements let us just see that here so now i'll just create a sheet where we would be having such a information so what we would be doing is we would be having few things and i don't want to do it right now yeah so here thing is you have this uh, few things say element type right then what is its tag name and there are few other things as well that we are going to learn in some time so what is the element type now there are different different types of elements there are text boxes right we have say email address box right number box then we have simple text right and then we have these check boxes we have few other things as well say we have radio buttons we have images we have links right we have buttons so there are a lot of things on the page it the page is composed of a lot of things now for example we saw this text box right this text box is of type input tag right so the tag name is input now there is some other information specified with this if you notice something we have name we have class we have id we have placeholder now what are these things the tag is input and whenever we have some other things specified after some space this means that these are its attributes what are attributes attributes are something 
that tell us about what all things this tag possesses right so th these things makes the tag say unique which specify a few things that how the tag will behave right for example we have this input tag and input tag has a type text right now type equals to text is specifying that this is a simple text box right now for its identification we have two other things we have a name and we have id right apart from that we have its class as well so there are a lot of things id is something which allows us to locate the element name also specifies the information that goes with the element right now here these are its attributes name is an attribute class is an attribute id is an attribute placeholder is an attribute and here value which has nothing specified with it and type is an attribute right now here coming back to the sheet so we can have some mandatory attributes right for example type equals to text right this is very important for text box right now for text box this is type equals to text for email address box the the tag name would remain same it won't change but here the mandatory attribute would change now so what would be the mandatory attribute it would be type equals to let's see what it will be so let's just go back and here we have this email box right now if you notice something the type has changed to email now right so why email because email specifies that there should be a properly specified email address which contains say the format like this right username at the rate domain name right and dot extension right so username can be anything at the rate domain name dot extension so for example my email address abhishek at the rate wisdom trainings dot com right so it is a specific email address which has some pattern for followed here right now here this is done this means that we have to specify the attribute as type equals to mail for number box well, let's see what is there maybe it has been specified here maybe it has not been specified here let us just see that so for contact number the type is text it can be text why because contact number may contain hyphens and plus marks now if we specify it as a specific thing we won't be able to work with it right next thing it can be type equals to text or number right it can be anything it depends on your need so here this is also having the tag uh, set tag name as input now we are done with input tags text simple text right now simple text can have any attribute it can be having paragraph tag it can be having bold tag it can be having italics tag right it can be having say span tag it can be having div tag so these are the different different types of tags it can have or maybe it is without tag as well so text can be specified anywhere any time and if we want to stylize it then we specify it with the tag name otherwise we don't specify it with the tag name for example here we have some text written for example this contact us contact us is under this paragraph tag p means paragraph tag right now if we see this tag and text contact us text this is under list item tag right for example this contact us 
this is uh, this is a uh, this is a link so we can ignore it right now just a second say testimonials so testimonials is written inside paragraph tag again right so text can be anywhere we can place text anywhere it is not a mandatory thing that we have to specify the text inside of some specific tag what about the mandatory attributes there is no nothing as such for text if you want to stylize it we can specify the attributes otherwise we don't have to next thing the checkbox let's see whether the checkbox is available on this page or not it is not available so there is another website that may have this checkbox available so control shift n it is not opening this so here facebook.com and they gave me a new page no worries click create new account here also we don't have a checkbox we may have a checkbox here in redf.com sign in and here we have this checkbox right so now checkbox what all things they possess right click on this inspect this element this is the easiest way to get access to this elements tag name inside the code right so inside the backend code now here this is the checkbox that we need to have now if you notice something the tag name is again input but type is now checkbox right so this has to be specified so coming back to this checkbox is having type checkbox what did i do type equals to checkbox right tag name is input now about radio buttons so it is simply type equals to radio right and here radio and what about the tag name tag name is again input so any information any tag so any element which allows us to specify the data in it this clearly means that that tag name is input tag right so here this is done now next thing is images now there are images on the page for example this image is a text it is a text for example this image right via pop up pop cup right click here inspect it now if you notice something this image has a tag img right so images have a tag img now is there any mandatory attribute yes what is that that is src why because if we have a image we need to tell where that image resides what is the address of that image for example here we have src equals to some address right a url of the image from where we are able to see that image right this is something mandatory other things are not mandatory you can you need not to specify border you need not to specify width you don't need to have this class specified as well you can specify these things but it, these are not mandatory mandatory thing is source tag sorry uh, source attribute so here we have the images as well now what about links links or hyperlinks right on this page we have some hyperlinks for example this rediff.com if we examine this this is an anchor tag right so anchor tag and it has a mandatory attribute attribute href if you notice it here this is also having the anchor tag and it has the mandatory attribute href right so this is the tag that we are trying to access now here this means that we can specify these things here link is a anchor tag and it has the mandatory attribute href we need to specify the address where we have to go the last thing is button so there are different different kinds of buttons on the page this is a link right but if we go to this particular page this is a sign in button if we analyze it you would notice something the type is submit the tag name is input so we have this tag name as input 
and the say type is submit right so these are the things that we have to specify if we want to have these kinds of say these elements accessed right now here these are the elements that selenium sees as well selenium does not see this text like this selenium does not see the page like this it sees the content behind right it sees the source code behind so what is the source code and what all information is here right selenium sees this particular information it doesn't care about how the page is looking at all right now the question is why selenium interacts with the browsers with the help of web driver web driver what it does is it simply passes on this content to the code right and then code is able to work with it now here what if we want to access some content here on this particular page how would we be able to work with it now working with the pages is very easy so let us uh, see that here suppose I, I, i'll try working on this particular page right so we have a username field we have a password field let's try filling on this information here right first thing is we need to have this uh, you say page url so let us just have this page url with us and let's start writing the code now so we have to have we need to have this new package created that is day four guys let me know if i'm going fast ultimate goal is to make you understand things if i'm going fast and you're not able to understand things then it is of no use right here let us just create a new class and here the name so say rediff login now rediff login is created we don't need other classes so close others let us just close all the things we need to have first of all the main method control z control space main method now here first thing first we need to initialize the browser so web driver driver equals to new chrome driver right i prefer chrome you can prefer any browser the browser you like in different different systems different different browsers open fast so it is not mandatory that chrome is working fast on my machine so it would be working fast on your machine as well it depends on machine to machine so driver is initialized now what we have to do we need to get to the page driver dot get and what is the page url so this is the page url that we copied so you can simply copy paste the things rather than typing because we may make mistakes while typing next thing we have got to the page now the question is interacting with this particular element right how would we be able to interact with this particular element let us just see that now i'll close this particular tab i'll close this particular tab as well here we'll go to the official website of selenium now and here on this particular page let us just move to download section and we will be going to api docs now we require something that allows us to have access to the elements right so scroll down api docs and here now we need web elements right we need to have access to the elements so there is a interface in selenium that allows us to have access to the web elements and that interface is web element interface right now if you notice something they're specifying it here right represents an html element generally all interesting operations to do with interaction with page will be performed through this particular interface right so this is something that enables us to interact with the page elements right so what page elements this particular page element and just a second this particular bar is yeah so this particular page element or this particular page element right 
so here let us just try working with these now now we need to inspect this particular now so you may have noticed that I'm trying to inspect elements what is this particular thing what is this window called right this window is called as developer tools window in Chrome it is called as Chrome developer tools in Firefox it is known as Firefox developer tools and on different different browsers it is something the browser name developer tools right so these allow the, the, the this tool window it allows us to interact with the elements more easily and we are able to locate the elements on the HTML code more easily rather than right clicking on the page and then going to view page source and then see, uh, say finding the element there right so we have this flexibility to look up the elements here right and we can deal with the elements directly now I wanted access to this particular element right click here go to inspect and you have this element highlighted in this particular window now there is an input tag which has a type text now to access this element we need to specify something which is unique now if you remember something when I was telling you about the uh, these element I told you that ID is something which is unique so here we will be trying to access this element with the help of a ID right so now how to have access to this let us uh, see that so we need to have the web element initialized so web element now we need to name this element name so this is username field right the username field needs to have the element so how you would be able to have the access to the element right so it is simple to find the element we have something with web element right so coming back to this going back to this particular page now we will be going to web driver web driver may have a method that we could use so what method we would want to use let us just see that now if you notice something there is a method whose return type is web element right and here if we notice something it finds the first web element using the given method this means that we can find element right so what we have to do we need to write driver dot find element right now to find the element we need to have a locating mechanism right now what is that location uh, locating mechanism now by is the class that provides us the mechanism with which we can locate the element right so this is the class by which which tells us that mechanism used to locate elements within the document right now by class has some methods right some static methods static by class name CSS selector static ID link text name partial link text tag name and then this X path so there are different different ways with which we can find the elements on the page so which particular way we would be using so we would be using this by ID right here coming back to the code so by dot ID now it needs the ID so what is the ID the ID should be of type string so here string now what is the ID let us just go back to the page and see that ID the ID is login one so we have access to this particular element now and we can say work with this right now here we have found this element we have found the element with this particular command driver dot find element by ID and we allocated this value to this particular username field variable I will call it variable right now here the data is here inside this username field now it comes to accessing this information right what all things we can do with it so here what if we try to say do something with it what if I want to say 
type something inside it how would I be able to do that for that let us just go back to this particular say web element interface right interface web element now here we have few things with us right and open key dot selenium interface web element so we have click method we have submit method we have send keys method if you notice something send keys is telling us use this method method to simulate typing into an element right which may set its value now we want to do this thing right so here what we would be doing is we would be using this particular method how username field dot send keys now we are able to send data now what data we have to send it should be in a character sequence this means that you can specify a string type value now what data you would want to send I can type in anything say 1 to 9 right so I can type in this thing make sure that this is in string format do not specify data directly it will not work right here this is specified now let us just try running this particular code control f11 right the code will be executing it will open chrome browser and then once the browser is open we would be able to see the information that we wanted to see so here you can see that username field is typed with one two three four five six seven eight nine now can we fill in the password yes let us just try filling in the password now so how would we be able to uh, work with password so this is the password field notice something password field has the ID password itself copy this going back to the code now we know what we need to do right here web element say password field equals to driver dot find element by id and what is the id the id that we copied so element is located next thing is to work with this particular element so password field dot send keys and i would send the same data again one two three four five six seven eight nine right so here this is the information that we want to send now let us just try running this code now control f11 and in the meantime i'll close the unnecessary browser instances that we don't need so browser has opened and here you would notice that it is able to type the password as well now what if we want to try clicking on sign in button right we can click on this let us just try clicking on it so if we notice something we are easily able to work with these things right we are easily able to work with these particular elements now I want to have access to the sign in button yes I can have access to this now I'm trying to locate the element with its ID can I try something else yes I can try locating the element with its name as well ID is considered unique name can be unique as well right it is not considered unique always but it can be unique as well so we can have access to the element with its name as well so how would we be able to do that now this is the element that we need to have no this is the password field or no this is the field here so this is the submit button that we have to use the sign in button I'll close this browser instance and here what we would be doing is say web element say submit button equals to driver dot find element by this time I'll try with name so this is the name proceed now we have found the element what we have to do we have to click on that particular element going back to this particular sheet here if you notice something click is simple click this element right now here coming back to this say submit button dot click 
done and we can run this code now so control f11 I hit control f12 control f11 and our code is executing once again now this time it will fill in the information and it will be trying to sign in now it tried to sign in and it it is showing us temporary error occurred please try again because the username and password is incorrect right but yes we are able to go through with this now moving forward so now we know how would we be able to have access to these elements right and here what elements we try to access we try to access this particular element we try to access this password field and we try to access this sign in button can we work with links as well yes what if i want to click on this create new account i don't want to work on these things i just want to click on create new account how would i be able to work with that let us just see that so here first of all i just want to know that whether we would be able to work with this here so there is no attribute here right now right this means that we cannot access it right now right so it has a title but there is no id or name attribute right remember this thing with the current methods we have we won't be able to work with these things right now let us just move forward so in qtp selenium.com just a second this thing is uh, um, i can't even move it outside yeah so here if we go to qtp selenium.com where is that site we have this login button this is not a button actually this is the link so here this is the login link right it has the button login maybe i won't be able to because it is the class right so now here accessing links is tougher now right what if i try to access the links what would happen say on the same page on the redif mail login page right what has happened just a second guys okay so coming back to this now here where was i yeah so uh, what i was telling you uh, i was at this redif page right so let us just go to redif login page now on this particular page what if i want to have access to the anchor tag right i can have it but the thing is i don't know which anchor tag we would be able to have access to let us just try running the code once so i'll comment out all these things i'll have a simple code say web element right say first anchor tag right equals to driver dot find element by tag name we have this method which we can use and the tag name is simply a right i don't know which element will be used but let's see what happens here now first tag anchor tag dot click not clear click click is something that will be allowing us to click on this particular element so here this is done control f11 now the code is executing and here it will be clicking on the first anchor tag now the first anchor tag was the very first element so how did it work actually right now why did i mention first anchor tag as well now if you notice this particular page right and on this particular page we had this find element method find the first web element using the given method 
right it is simply telling us this thing now how selenium works on page source this means that like so you may have a question how the selenium thing is going on say working on this particular page so what happens is that selenium gets the code it starts reading the page from this particular part and then what it does is it goes to the top right corner right then it starts from the next line and goes like this so it will be working on the page like this line by line right and like this only so any element that you would require right if it matches the criteria it will be simply finding that particular element and providing that element to you now for example you have some element that you would want to have access to a very simple element say this is the element this is the element and this is the element so there are the elements which have the same information right now the thing is you would want to have access to this particular element question is would you be able to have access to it directly no what happens is that selenium will start finding the element with the specified information when it finds this particular element it will not be going forward it will stop the code execution at this particular point right so th these all things won't be scanned the scan is complete it will find this particular element and it is good to go over here it will simply return you that particular element and you have to work with that particular element only right now here this means that we cannot have access to the elements which we even want to have access to now the next thing the next thing is now what if you would say you encounter something that is you encounter an element or you encounter two elements whose id is same right so here with the same scenario right suppose there is a element this one just a second say there is this element there is another element there is another element and there is another element now what happens two of these elements not all two of these elements this one just a second this one and this one have the same ids these have say ids say 2 3 this is having one and this is also having one now you wanted to have access to this particular element selenium will not know that this element even exists why because it will be going like this and here what happens at the very first line it will be finding this element the moment it finds this element it does not know and it does not even know that this element exists so this is the case when you have to access this element and you are not able to access this element now the simple mechanisms the simple mechanisms like the ones we used right now name id right these completely fail over here why because the very first element that you get is not the element always that you want to have right and this causes a lot of trouble now to have access to these elements there are different different mechanisms that we have to use right that we would be learning in the next lecture now coming back to the syllabus so we know now uh, we now know how we uh, this uh, say selenium works on page source we know how to analyze page source now right we worked on chrome now let us see about mozilla firefox is it different let us see so firefox working with firefox is easy right here i don't want to use firefox as my default browser i don't like this browser here i'll go with the same page redif.com and that login button now page looks same 
everything is same here right now if I try to access this element we have this inspect element button here as well it opens in a separate view it opens it looks something different but the ultimate goal is same here as well to locate the elements on the code that we would want to work with right it shows us some lines as well where the element is it makes it easy for us to understand where the element is on the page for example I wanted to have access to this particular element I am able to access this I can click on this particular button and I can choose the other element that I would want to have access to and it will highlight that particular element here on this particular code right this code is HTML code you can inspect any element now this particular th tab right what is this tab in Firefox it is named as inspector in Google Chrome it is named as elements now to open this particular window we have a shortcut as well that is F12 key or control shift I key right you can see this is named as elements here what about say edge so edge browser is here as well now here in edge browser I'm having the older version of edge browser if I hit F12 key what happens let us just see that so it is forcing me to download the new for say edge browser now I don't want to go with that right now but you can see that here is the elements tab now the thing with newer edge browser it is completely same as Chrome browser because it is based on Google Chrome so everything will be same there but here the look and feel is a lit little bit different in the older version right what about Internet Explorer browser is it kind of different let us just see that so every browser has its own developer tools which allow you have access to the say elements on the page that you would want to see so here the last browser is Internet Explorer now you may be bound to some projects that allow you to have access to the websites on Internet Explorer only and majorly those projects are by banking uh, say um, say banking companies right they do not prefer using any other browser they prefer using Internet Explorer browser right here to open the developer tools the same plain old key F12 key and it looks something like this here it is mentioned as DOM Explorer what is this DOM Explorer DOM Explorer means that document object model right and here it is having all the things you can click on this particular select element button and you can uh, say select the element you would want to and it will show you the corresponding tag and its values right so you can see that this is a span tag which has the uh, say class something and then it has the text sign in specified span tag has a parent tag anchor tag which is the one which would be clicked actually so it has a title sign in right so every browser has its own developer tools and deployed in its own way we don't have to get confused with all these things right our goal is to work with the pages the thing is that the concept is same everywhere locating a element is very easy everywhere right the same way we are locating the element in Google Chrome the same we are locating the element in say this say Internet Explorer as well right or any other browser Edge Firefox any browser that we use right now here let us just close this so this is one of the browsers that I don't prefer but still people who are into the banking industry they have to use these browsers okay now we are done with the in this thing say analyzing page in Chrome say Mozilla Chrome and we are done with other two browsers as well right tag and attribute matrix we know that what are the tags and what are their attributes ID and name attributes there can be any attributes but ID and name attributes are the two attributes which are considered as the unique attributes we have class attributes as well these attributes provide us the styling information right we may be locating the elements with these as well but not right now because there are some constraints that we won't be able to use right now right 
Web element interface. This is something that we used, which allows us to locate the elements on the page, right? This is something web element, right? Now, say these things are done. Now, what's next? So now this was for today's lecture. What you have to do is that you have an assignment. Go to facebook.com. So not a new tab, incognito window. It will be opening my old page otherwise. So what you have to do is that you have to go to facebook.com. And then what you have to do is fill in this information, right? You have to fill in the, your username. You have to fill in your password, then log in, right? After logging in, what you have to do is that you have to do few things. Let me just take you to my account. And here you need to click on your profile link and the page is still loading. So it will take a little bit time. And here, this is the profile link button. You just have to click here, right? Once you have clicked here, what's next is, okay, simply try clicking here. We'll say discuss the other things later on, right? A very, very, very simple scenario. What is the scenario? The scenario is go to facebook.com and then say, try login in right in the next lecture what we would be dealing with is let me just give you a quick idea about it in the next lecture we will be dealing with say x paths what are x paths and how would we be able to work with x paths right we will be learning about that in the next lecture so x paths basically are something which would be allowing us to have more complex access to the element that we need and these are very accurate right so these are mostly preferred in every scenario where you have to deal with elements on the page right so we would be learning how expats work what are expats and how would we be able to work with expats in our case right and how would we be able to solve the problem what if two elements have same id right there can be multiple elements with the same id we need to solve that problem and we need to solve that problem as well where we don't have id and name attributes the simplest example is this login screen i wanted to click on this create new account right i'm not able to reason being i don't have the id field here i don't have the class field say class attribute here sorry name attribute here Right. So this makes it complex for me as well to click on these things or to have access to these things. Now, with the help of X paths, we will be learning how we can have access to these particular elements. Accessing these elements is required, right? We, we cannot deal with the elements which are simply the text boxes and, on, and the buttons only. Right. We need to have to access. Uh, we say we need to have access to other elements on the page as well, which might not be say uh, having, uh, which might not possess these uh, say things that is ID and name, but still we need them or say, I want to click on this element. So this also ha does not have any information that I can say use to locate it. But still, we would be learning how would we can locate these elements and we can work with these elements, right? So this was for today's lecture. If you have any queries, you can feel free to ask.